What is going on guys? This video is going to be discussing the 30 superstars that I believe should participate in the men's Royal Rumble matchup coming up in 11 days, 10 days, something like that at the Royal Rumble event. Um, but it's not just going to be that. I'm going to go through every single entry and then we'll throughout it talk about, you know, some moments that I would have happened, some eliminations that I would have occur between certain people, talk about who I think should be in the final few, and of course who I think should win the Royal Rumble matchup. So uh, I've made videos like uh, like this in the past, but this one's going to be a little different. I'm doing some post-production editing because I actually feel like doing that today. And uh, made some cool graphics um, for every single entrance. So you're going to get to see that and, um, and whatnot. So... Let's get into this video, shall we? So here we go. This is how I would pretty much. This is pretty much how I booked the Royal Rumble. I'm just not going to get too in depth. Um, but there's going to be, you know, like an out. A pretty. A, you're going to get an idea of how you know I would do the Royal Rumbles. So coming in at entry number one, I would have the Eater of Worlds, Bray Wyatt, he's kicking off the Royal Rumble. I think he's a very good number one. And at number two, I wanted to have a good opposing opponent for Bray to kick off the Rumble with. So I picked none other than at number two. Randy Orton. Obviously, Orton and Bray have, you know, history with each other last year's WrestleMania and pretty much, you know, a, a whole lot of last year or end of 2016 into last year is what I should say. And of course, you know, I just wanted a good, I, I always like, you know, a good Raw versus SmackDown, you know, matchups kicking off the Royal Rumble. I love when they did that in the past, whether it was, you know, Benoit and Guerrero or Mysterio and Triple H, you know, or, you know, stuff like that, or Benoit and Orton, you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying, so they didn't do it last year, we had Big Cass and Jericho, which were two Raw guys, but they, you know, this year I hope they do it, um, it's just, you know, a little thing that I, I like, it's like, really kicks off the rumble, that it's, you know, any matchups can happen, and having one Raw guy and one SmackDown guy, I really like, um, starting off the rumble match, and like I said, Bray and Orton have history with each other, so I think it's a good note, um, uh, good one and two plus you have a plethora of you know big time superstars in this matchup so you got to spread them out so having brian orton kick off the rumble i think would be real real good coming in and entry number three i would have from smackdown live aiden english aiden is obviously not going to do too much in this matchup i'll literally have him come in at number three get some offense in and then i know they they did this on smackdown like you know sometime after wrestlemania last year um but aiden english goes to the top rope Goes to do something, some kind of dive on Orton, but literally he's just going to get caught with an RKO and Orton's going to throw his ass right out. So, Aiden English, in and out after number three, but Randy Orton eliminated in English. And then, of course, coming in at number four, I would have, also from SmackDown Live, Mojo Rawley. So, Mojo Rawley's going to run in. He's not going to do, he, I mean, he's, he's not going to do too much. I mean, he's just going to get in there, get some offense in. He's not going to get eliminated right away, Um, but Mojo is going to go in there and join the fray. At entrance number five, though, I'd have, from Monday Night Raw, Bray Wyatt's current rival, um, the Woken One, Matt Hardy, coming down there, going after Bray. Him and Bray can mix it up, so that would leave, you know, Bray and Matt going at it in the ring. And then uh, Mojo and Orton can go at it in the ring. Mojo can pretty much beat Orton up for, you know, a couple of minutes and make him look a little bit dominant until number six comes in. That would be um, none other than Zack Ryder, Mojo Rawley's current rival and former tag team partner. Ryder comes down, goes right after Mojo. Um, Mojo's going to fight him off a little bit, pushes him off. Zack Ryder's going to come full head of steam, clothesline Mojo right out of the ring, and Zack Ryder eliminates Mojo Rawley from the Royal Rumble matchup. So Zack, um, Matt Hardy, Ray Wyatt, and Randy Orton would be the four in there. Coming in at number seven would be a first of a few surprises in the matchup. The first one being... The WWE United Kingdom Champion, none other than Pete Dunne coming in at number 7. I think you should definitely have Pete Dunne in the Royal Rumble matchup. He's uh, made an appearance on Raw um, when they did the uh, overseas tour back in November. And obviously everybody knows who this guy is right now. I mean, every time he's in the WWE ring or in an NXT ring, he just absolutely puts on a great performance. Pete Dunne is just that good in my opinion. I think he should definitely be showcased in the Royal Rumble matchup. And I think having him come in at an early slot... And, you know, just getting some offense in on guys like Bray Wyatt, Randy Orton, and Matt Hardy uh, would be good for him. I would have Pete Dunne eliminate Zack Ryder, get a big elimination, and uh, just make him look strong. Um, until, you know, Enter Summer 8 comes in. That being um, none other than let's make 205 Live a better place, shall we? I know that's not what he says, but you know the reference I'm getting to. None other than uh, the man, the myth, the legend, Drew Gulak. Drew Gulak, a big Philadelphia guy. I definitely, if any Cruiserweight is going to be in the Rumble match, I would definitely have Drew Gulak in there. Um, I really love Drew Gulak. He's honestly my favorite cruiserweight just because, you know, I've been watching him for years and he's a Philly guy and I just love seeing everything he does in the cruiserweight division and on Raw and 205 Live. He's just so entertaining and so good at what he does and him getting in there and mixing up with Pete Dunne I think would be real entertaining. And I would absolutely just love Gulak to come in, you know, knock out everybody and just, you know, you know, knock down everybody pretty much and just, you know, be celebrating in the ring, have his megaphone, just, you know, saying some shit over his me megaphone to the crowd and just being entertaining Drew Gulak as always. Until 
Number nine comes in, and that would be none other than Hideo Itami. Gulak, Hideo Itami's news is going to hit. Gulak's going to shit his pants. Hideo Itami is going to come down there. Gulak's going to be trying to avoid him. Hideo Itami is going to end up kicking Drew Gulak right in the head. Hits him with the GTS and throws Drew Gulak out of there. Obviously, Gulak's not winning the Royal Rumble matchup, but I think his appearance would be great. And then having Hideo come down there, hit him with the GTS, and uh, throw his ass out would be very entertaining. And you get a Hideo Itami appearance in the Rumble, and I really want to. I, th I really think that would be good, you know, for Hideo Itami because, you know, he really hasn't been featured on Raw that much, and um, he I don't know he hasn't really been doing anything too big in the Cruiserweight division um, on Two Five Live as of late ever since he showed up. So I think an appearance in the Rumble could help him a little bit. And uh, having a big moment, him, him, excuse me, GTSing Drew Gulak and throwing him out and getting an elimination will be good for him. So I definitely think Adeo Tommy should be in the Royal Rumble matchup. Then, of course, you also have Adeo Tommy and Pete Dunne going at it, which that would be great singles match-wise. Up to this point, obviously, you would have Adeo, Pete Dunne, uh, Matt Hardy, Bray Wyatt, and Randy Orton in the ring. So coming in at number 10, I would have The Miz, um, possibly the Intercontinental Champion at the time. I'm not sure what's going to happen next week on Raw, but that remains to be seen. Miz coming in at 10, going after Adeo Tommy, going after Pete Dunne. And, um, you know, just mixing it in there with Matt Hardy and whatnot. And uh, Orton, you know, would, would be fine. Um, but I was specifically um, near this, you know, after he goes in, you know, goes after everybody. I was specifically have him beat down on Matt Hardy and, you know, make an impact in, on him. And you can probably guess what's coming here. Matt, uh, the Miz is dominating. Miz is beating down on Woken Matt Hardy. Only for number 11 to come out, which would be none other than the return of Jeff Hardy. Uh, another surprise for the matchup. Jeff Hardy makes his return, goes right after the Miz. Um, which was, I believe, one of the last people he would... I, it might have been the la his last opponent. I, th I know him and Miz had that uh, really good uh, Intercontinental title match on Raw back in September, and I think that might have been Jeff Hardy's last match um, since he's been out. So I think Jeff going right after The Miz um, would be really good. And even if that wasn't his last match, I mean, The Miz um, and The Miz Taraj and The Hardys were all mixing it up around the time Jeff went out. So it would be a good you know moment for Jeff to come back. And, excuse me, I really don't know for sure if Jeff is good to go yet. I mean, I know he should be back by WrestleMania time. I mean, he should be back, um, you know, even way before WrestleMania, to be honest. You know, so I know it's not anything serious. I know him and him, me saying him coming out in the Royal Rumble match isn't nothing too crazy. So I'd definitely have Jeff Hardy return the Royal Rumble if possible. And just, you know, selfish reasons. I really want to see Jeff Hardy because I'm going to be at the Rumble. So I just really want to see Jeff Hardy back um, and, you know, have that moment and me pop huge for him. So him coming out at number 11, going right up to the Miz, I think would be real, real good. Coming in at entrant number 12, I would have the modern day Maharaja, General Hall, um, going in there. Obviously, him and Randy Orton got some, you know, history they can build off of. General Hall being General Hall, though, is going to come in and get some heat. He can throw out Pete Dunne and Hideo Itami, possibly. I know I, I don't have every single elimination up in here, but, you know, I obviously had, I had a few, which I already said. But General Hall could easily come in and get some uh, heat going after those two um, and throwing them out. Uh, Hideo Tommy and Pete Dundon to last long, so Jinner coming in and throwing them out will get heat on him, even though he's already going to have heat because he's Jinner Mahal and it's a it's Philly crowd, so put two and two together and there you go. At entry number 13, I would have representing the New Day, Xavier Woods. I don't believe you need to have the entire New Day in the Royal Rumble matchup, um, so you could easily just not even announce that Xavier Woods is going to be in the, in the matchup and then... This is literally just an idea I had. This is not like a whole prediction, but like l literally throughout the, the night, you can have backstage segments with a new day, like trying to pick who's going to be in the Rumble match. And then we find out Xavier Woods is going to be in when the Rumble match comes. And I really want, if anybody of the three is going to be in there, I'd really honestly pick Xavier Woods because I, you know, he's a very underrated singles guy. And I think he's proved that over the past, um, well, just recently, obviously he's, they put him in the U.S. title tournament, which I've liked. Um, and obviously he lost to Jeremy Hall last night on SmackDown. And uh, obviously, Jim Hall lost in the finals anyway. But point is, I think Xavier Woods is a very good singles guy. And if anybody from the New Day is going to be in the Rumble match, I would have him in there. And like I said, him and Jim Hall now have some, you know, uh, backstory um, because of, you know, their match on SmackDown and whatnot. So they could easily, you know, mix it up in the Rumble match. So Xavier Woods in at 13. At number 14, I would have representing the bar, Cesaro. Possibly a new Raw Tag Team Champion. Of course, at the Rumble, we're going to be getting the Bar versus Jason Jordan and Seth Rollins for the Raw Tag Titles. Later in the night, when the Rumble match comes, Cesaro could easily be the new Raw Tag Team Champion. That remains to be seen. So, so getting Cesaro in there, obviously Sheamus is in as well, which he will come later. But Cesaro went at 14. At number 15, halfway uh, during the Royal Rumble match, I would have none other than John Cena come out at number 15. He can get in there, mix it up with Cesaro, mix it up with uh, uh, Jinder Mahal. You know, go after the heels pretty much and mix it up with everybody and uh, whatnot. He's got history with, you know, The Miz and Bray Wyatt and Randy Orton. 
which I would obviously still all have them in at, at this point. Um, so Sia can easily get in there, and it's a big number 15, big halfway point toward, uh, there, there, excuse me, what the fuck am I saying? Big halfway point during the Royal Rumble, so Cena coming in at 15 would be great. Um, and at number 16, I would have none other than the leader of the Balor Club, Finn Balor, coming in there. Um, definitely, I can't wait to see him in the Royal Rumble matchup, gonna be his first Rumble, obviously because of his injury last year, and the first time he'll be in Philadelphia since NXT came to Philly, um, back in 2016, because of bo both times Raw was in Philly last year. Um, he was on the shelf, um, so, you know, Finn being back in Philly is going to be, you know, really cool, and I definitely expect the crowd to go nuts for him, um, and him coming in right after John Cena and going after Cena would be, um, you know, big for him as well. And then towards number 17, I'd have the leader of the Titus Worldwide, Titus O'Neil. Um, obviously not going to do too much in the Royal Rumble matchup, he's, he's Titus O'Neil. Um, nothing against him, but he's obviously not going to have a big appearance. Last time, uh, the, uh, Fuck am I saying? Last time Royal Rumbles in Philly, he came in, got thrown right out by Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose. Lasted, what was it, four seconds or something like that. So, Toto Sweeney not going to do much. At entrance number 18, I would have the other half of the bar, Sheamus. Cesaro and Sheamus, obviously, you want to kind of have them close to entering the Rumble together so they can get in there, do some double team work. And I would specifically have them in um, at this point so they can beat down on John Cena um, right when Sheamus comes in. Just double teaming them only for number 19 to come out. And you can make maybe make a guess right now, but at number 19, I would have none other than the big dog, Roman Reigns, coming out at number 19. Coming out at the same number that he won the Royal Rumble match back in Philly in 2015. And you cannot sit here and tell me that if Roman Reigns came out at the same number, number 19, in Philly, the same, the, at, you know, the same, same situation that he won the Royal Rumble ba match back in Philly, people are already going to be worried that Roman Reigns is going to win the Rumble. If you put him in that same situation, 19, same number, same venue, um, that people are, are going to be even more worried that it's going to be WWE all oh, trying to make history, coming in at number 19 again. He's going to win again in the same place. And WWE trying to make more history with Roman Reigns. It's going to add a whole other factor if he comes in at the same number that he did when he won. So I would specifically have Roman Reigns come out at 19. Plus, Cesaro and Sheamus are in there beating down on Cena. Roman comes in there, helps out Cena. And then only for them to clear house um, and, you know, maybe get an elimination or two. But pretty much clear clear the ring and, you know, everyone's knocked down. Only for Cena and Roman Reigns to come face to face for the first time since No Mercy. And literally, only nothing. Like, literally just, they don't fight yet. I mean, Roman and Cena just go face to face. Only for number 20 to come out to interrupt Roman and Cena. And number 20, I would have the Alpha, the GOAT, Chris Jericho. Enter at number 20, interrupting this John Cena Roman Reigns face to face showdown. Um, I don't know if they're going to announce Jericho. Uh, I mean, I don't know if they would announce Jericho or if they just have him show up, but I didn't think he would be in the Royal Rumble at all until they announced that he will be on Monday Night Raw at Raw 25 next week, and that completely changed the game. I don't know what's going on with Jericho right now, whether he's working New Japan, whether he's working WWE, if this is going to be a one time thing next Monday at Raw, if they're going to try to intermingle some stuff with New Japan and WWE, and maybe we'll get. A Kenny Omega appearance at the Rumble, most likely not going to happen. Obviously, I'm not saying that's going to happen. I'm just really speculating here. I'm not getting my hopes up for something like that at all because that's very low likely that happens. But Jericho being in the Royal Rumble, if he's going to be on Raw next week, is very likely. So Jericho coming in at number 20, interrupting this Cena Roman Reigns thing. And Jericho coming in at one of the hottest points in his career right now, at coming off of Wrestle Kingdom 12 versus this Kenny Omega stuff and him still being in New Japan and making waves, you know, over there and whatnot. So, you know, him coming in, uh, interrupting Cena and Roman would be huge. The crowd would go nuts, um, and so would I specifically. So Jericho comes in at number 20. And at number 21, after you had the Cena Roman Reigns showdown, after you had Jericho interrupting, all hell breaking loose in the ring between the three of them and, and whatnot. At number 21, I had none other than everyone's favorite Mr. Losing Streak, Kurt Hawkins. Kurt's going to come in there and pretty much pull up. Uh, you, know, you remember in 2005 when Muhammad Hassan came out and literally the ring stopped and everyone just beat down Muhammad Hassan and duel, like everyone threw him out. S sort of something similar with that. The whole ring doesn't have to stop for Kurt Hawkins, but literally Kurt Hawkins, he's, I would literally have him go in there and, you know, just just really making a point. Like he's 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 very, you know, I'm going to win the Royal Rumble and stuff like that. Literally just for him to catch a code breaker, a Superman punch, an AA, and, and, you know, just get beat up for, a, you know, a minute and just for somebody to throw him out and you know it's one of those entertaining moments just like when Hideo comes in GTS is Gulak to shut him up and you know gets thrown out and you know whoever el eliminates him eliminates him but point is everyone would just beat up Kurt Hawkins and not even have him do much until you know he just get he just gets beat up and eliminated is what I'm saying so Kurt Hawkins in and out at number 21 at number 22 
Chris Jericho, he's ruling the, not ruling the ring, but you know he's having a wave of momentum in the ring that they're they're acknowledging. Only for number twenty two to come out, Shinsuke Nakamura, the King of Strong Style. Jericho and Nakamura was a, apparently a rumored matchup for last year's WrestleMania until plans changed with Jericho and Kevin Owens, and, uh, and you know Nakamura just ended up showing up on SmackDown after Mania anyway. Um, or in, instead, I should say. So having this Jericho Nakamura showed out in the in the Royal Rumble match would be very good. It's a singles match I personally want to see. A singles match I know a lot of other people are definitely going to want to see. So having them uh, exchange it and you know go at it for the first time in the Rumble match would be huge. So Nakamura coming down at number 22. Him and Jericho can mix it up, and then of course, obviously, you're going to have Roman and Cena in there. And uh, obviously, I didn't go too in depth, but it, with this, so you might still have Brian Orton in there, Balor still in there. So you're going to have Nakamura mixing up with a plethora of people. And, you know, just coming in and making a big statement at number 22. At number 23, I would have everybody's favorite WWE superstar right now. That, of course, being Jason Jordan. <laughs> Obviously, I'm lying with that statement. But Jason Jordan comes in at number 23. Number 24, I would have Apollo Crews. Number 25, I would have Elias. Um, and up to this point, you know, Jason Jordan can be getting beaten down by Elias or getting beaten down by anybody. Only for number 26 to come out, that being his current tag team partner, Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins can come down there, help out Jason Jordan for the time being. But at some point during this matchup, Seth Rollins is going to get tired of Jason Jordan's shit, whether it's at this moment or later on in the match if they if they last. And Seth Rollins, I would have him curb stomp Jason Jordan, since that move is back now. Curb stomp Jason Jordan and throw his ass out and, you know, get Jason Jordan out of here. Rollins making a statement. Possibly after they lost the tag team titles, Rollins is going to be pissed at Jason Jordan, even though he's already pissed at him every single week on raw add in if they lose the tag team titles and rollins is going to get jason jordan's ass out of there literally have him run down save his ass and then eliminate him simple as that at number 27 i would have rusev rusev day chance are going to be going wild in the wells fargo center so i honestly can't wait for rusev to come out in the royal rumble matchup because it's going to be a doozy is what i'm saying so i would have rusev at 27 follow that up only for the rusev day chance to get interrupted by number 28 Ty Dillinger interrupt the Rusev Day chance with the 10 10 10 chance. And um, obviously, he's not going to enter a 10 every year. So it's a, not a big deal that he's coming out of 28. So Ty Dillinger at 28. And number 29, I'd have the brand new United States champion, the glorious Bobby Roode, coming in there. If General Hall is still in the matchup, they can mix it up. I'm sure they're probably going to continue that rivalry. Or even though it's not really a rivalry, they just kind of met in the finals of the U.S. title tournament. But I'm sure they are going to continue something with them, um, possibly, um, at least for the next couple of weeks. Um, so I could definitely see uh, Jinder still in there, Bobby and Jinder mixing it up. And possibly Bobby Roode being the one to eliminate Jinder Mahal in the Royal Rumble matchup. But at number 30, the last entry in the Royal Rumble, um, if you haven't guessed already, Baron Corbin coming out at number 30. I think he's a very good number 30 spot. And um, it should be looked at as a guy who's big enough to you know, come out at number 30 and be the last entrant and come in and, and possibly win because he's the last guy, you know, who's going to enter the Royal Rumble. And Barry Corbin's one of my favorites, so I really want him to have a good showing in this matchup. Um, he's really not doing anything right now. I mean, which isn't an, a bad thing because the Royal Rumble is approaching, so there's a lot of guys who are just kind of, you know, just kind of moving towards the Royal Rumble and really not doing anything. They're just kind of doing anything specifically they're just kind of you know building towards the rumble is what i'm saying i keep repeating myself but you get the point and baron corbin's one of those guys so i really want him to come in at number 30 have a good showing possibly eliminate bobby Roode since he was the one who you know cost him the u.s title in the first place and you know knocked him out of the u.s title tournament and they've obviously had you know a, a feud going on on smackdown live you know recently so he could do that he can you know eliminate ty dillinger and stuff like that oh excuse me but um like I said, Baron Corbin, I, just, I think he's a good number 30 and guys should come out, have a good performance in the Royal Rumble match. So that would be all 30 guys I would have in the Royal Rumble match. Like I said, I had some eliminations that I said, you know, some that I already had in my head, some moments that I had in my head. Um, not every single thing. I didn't want to go into every single detail, but there's all 30 guys. Of course, I did say I'd have, um, say, my final four for the Royal Rumble match. So here it is. The final four guys I'd have in the Royal Rumble match up, um, go like this. Number 30, Baron Corbin. I would definitely still have in there Finn Balor, Roman Reigns, and Shinsuke Nakamura. I would have as your final four in the Royal Rumble matchup. Um, Corbin in there to look strong. Roman Reigns, I think, is no doubt going to be in the final few. And uh, Balor and Nakamura, which I'll talk about. Um, Corbin, I definitely want to have a, a strong performance um, before he goes. So I would literally have him, you know, end of days or deep six to Balor and Nakamura. Possibly going for the same thing on Roman. But Roman, you know, dumps him out of the ring. Corbin holds on. Corbin stands up on the apron. Roman Reigns. Superman punch. Corbin falls down. Roman Reigns eliminates Baron Corbin. Only for Finn Balor to come up behind Roman Reigns and dump him over the top rope. Why is not looking? 
So, excuse me again. Finn Balor would then eliminate Roman Reigns from the Royal Rumble matchup, leading to your final two, Finn Balor and Shinsuke Nakamura. I think there's a very good chance that could happen, to be perfectly honest. Balor and Nakamura being the final two in the Rumble matchup. So if there, that's what I would have happen if it were to happen. That'd be great. You definitely have them go at it for, you know, a f five minutes or at the least, you know, let them go at it. Let, you know, everyone just go nuts over who's going to be, you know, the one to main event WrestleMania, which I have my pick. Um, but I know everybody, you know, would just be 50, 50. And in that moment, I wouldn't give a shit who won. If Balor won, let's go. If Nakamura won, let's go. I'm all for either guy. And I think uh, many people would be like that. So everyone would just be so invested in Balor and Nakamura. And, and, you know, the final moments of the Rumble matchup, I think it'd be great. They're a perfect final two. And in the end, I would have Shinsuke Nakamura win, even though, you know, I want Balor to be in the Universal Champion. Well, you know, I want him to be the champion and, you know, be him and be in the Universal title picture, you know, as much as I want Nakamura versus AJ at WrestleMania. Um, but Nakamura versus AJ is a lot more likely than Balor being in the title picture at Mania. So Nakamura um, is my pick, and I will have will say that he wins the Royal Rumble matchup. Spoiler alert for my prediction video upcoming in the next couple weeks. But um, Shinsuke Nakamura to win the Royal Rumble matchup, and hopefully to face AJ Styles at WrestleMania. I mean, if Nakamura wins and he doesn't face AJ at Mania, something's wrong there. Um, so Nakamura wins the Royal Rumble matchup and send his ass to WrestleMania to face AJ Styles. Excuse me again. For the WWE title, couldn't get it out. I've been talking for 23 minutes straight. Oh, it's not going to be 23 minutes. Something's going to get cut from this video. Um, but that's how long it says on my phone, so we're just going to go with that. So there it is, guys. Those are the 30 superstars that would have entered the Royal Rumble matchup, plus some additional how I would book this and that. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm very excited for the Royal Rumble, just like everybody else. So this is just only the start, to pretty much, I should say, to the Royal Rumble videos. We have uh, do have more planned for the next, you know, less than two weeks till the Rumble um, goes down. Which I'm very excited for. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I made a video before this that is, well, was my last video. I don't know when, it's gonna, when this is going to go out. But it's my last video talking about the Women's Royal Rumble matchups. The possible returns and surprises. Debuts and whatnot. So go check that out. It'll be linked at the video uh, at the end of the video. Which might be on the screen now. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Follow me on Twitter at Noah Akoto And Instagram and whatnot. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.